Hello, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox, and these are some slides from the tutorial available on Twister 2. And we basically explain how Twister 2 addresses the same issues that Hadoop, uh, Storm, Heron, and Flink do, providing an integrated high performance uh, distributed programming environment. And effectively, is the operating system for the global AI modeling supercomputer, as I just in fact, Spark, etc. That's our view of them in the, for this, these lectures. Um, there are three uh, sections, D, E, and F. And uh, we start off with some overall remarks. And then we'll move on to a little more detail. And the last set of slides discusses some performance results. So when we look at the global AI and modeling supercomputer, the question we ask is, surely we need to use high performance technologies because we have big data. And that data is getting bigger and bigger, and probably getting bigger faster than computers are getting faster, because they're not getting faster very fast any longer because of the so called end of Moore's law. Up to now, maybe performance hasn't been so critical, namely productivity and getting lots of new applications running has been most critical. And so the early systems focused on ease of, ease of use and not on performance. So we want to try to fix these performance issues. And when we look at them, we see it's uh, pretty messy um, because the systems are monolithic. They're not designed to have components taken out and new components plugged in. And it's rather difficult to take individual components and up, upgrade them, although we have done that in some cases as of other people, especially D.K. Penta from Ohio State. Um, <clears throat> so if we look how to, so this whole field we sometimes call high performance big data computing, in, indicating that we try to use high performance to solve big data problems. And things like which Panda and we have done is to, um, with, uh, this is Judy Chu with our HARP system, is to add custom communication environments to um, uh, existing Apache systems. Um, another possibility is to actually start from scratch and provide a native uh, environment which runs under the big data subsystems, HDFS, Kubernetes, Mesos, and Yarn are all key components and give it the same capabilities. Um, final, another, uh, um, another possibility is to actually just go back to HPC, just do everything with MPI, Classic, Slurm, the scheduler, Luster, the um, um, shared file system in HPC cluster. That has the disadvantage that it loses all the capabilities that have been built into the big data systems. A, f a final possibility, which is a partial and good solution, is to take SkyKit Learn and TensorFlow and uh, add, add things to make them run faster either new algorithms or faster versions of current algorithms, either because the technology is faster or because you implement the parallelism in a, in a better fashion. So these are all things we uh, can discuss. And effectively, we're, tr we're looking at this one here today. So if we look at the two systems we've built in the uh, Digital Science Center, Harpdahl is Judy Chu. DAL is the Intel high performance um, library to do machine learning. And she has uh, merged that with uh, distributed technology, MP, uh, communication with uh, the so called MAC collective model, with, which is what you need to do big data systems. And we, uh, we have previously discussed the different types of uh, Data intensive uh, patterns from uh, map only through um, the map point to point. And this harp dial will support all of those.
But uh, we'll be looking here at Twister 2, which is um, has various features. It, it tries to be a toolkit, although we haven't actually exploited that so far because we haven't built enough tools yet to, to tell you the difference between a system and a toolkit. Um, and um, it can be packaged in different ways so that you can either get a dupe like capability, Spark, Heron, or Flink. And in each case, you get high performance. It has, it has three separate communication systems. The MPI style, which is sometimes called bulk synchronous because it tends to synchronize the different components when the MPI system is called. Data flow, which is um, much less uh, constrained and aimed for distributed computing. And the third one, which is some, not always thought of as communication, is what you get in what I described for Storm, where you have messaging coming from the edge and being queued by published described systems. So that, that Storm model, in fact, this whole Storm API is supported by Twister 2. We have to uh, do task management, and that's where we basically use currently Mesos and Kubernetes, with Kubernetes as our probably dominant environment, although we also support Slurm, which is the HPC environment. We need to have the data flow execution model, which we described for Spark. And we need to launch the harp dial library within the Mesos um, Kubernetes HDFS environment. We need to have a streaming interface and a batch or repository data interface. And we need to do the in-memory um, support that is so important for Spark. And we also you need to do fault tolerance, which is critical for the success of Spark and Hadoop and, and Flink and Storm, of course. And we use RDD-like technology because we see that's a great idea. And we call, and they say, unfortunately, everybody who does that does it differently because RDD is not packaged as a standalone capability. And um, we call that system in Twister 2 T. So we did the highlights actually on the previous slide. We now do them in a little more detail. So it basically does provide um, the same environment as uh, Hadoop and Spark, big data programming environment, or the global AI and modeling supercomputer environment. And it has what we think are some major improvements um, in areas from using HPC wherever and are appropriate, uh, to be able to package the storm capability and the Spark batch capability within the same system. And it also has the feature that it runs under Kubernetes and Mesos, but Slurm is also supported. It has high performance data flow, which supports iteration with fine grain and coarse grain uh, data flow. It's dynamic, it can either be synchronized or asynchronized, batch and streaming. We mentioned the two major communication environments to which we add the third publish subscribe system, and it has the rich state model for objects, supporting uh, the different uh, types of capabilities you want with RDDs to persist the objects on the disk. And these also to support either distributed, where you communicate the, the computation moves from task to task, or in place as an MPI, where the uh, computation remains fixed at a particular place. Okay, uh, here we have the third slide on highlights. Um, and there's a on about the first major highlight on this thing is data flow. There's a picture of this on the following slide. And this has to provide connections between the nodes of the data flow graph, whether they be in a storm like topology or in a spark like uh, or flink like um, 
data flow system. Uh, they, this, the communication corresponds to transformations. Those transformations have a communication model associated with them, which could be sophisticated, like the reduce operation that's done. The reduce operation is, if you like, the shuffle, uh, combine and merge and sort done um, from one node to the next node. Or it can just be a direct transformation of data if we're going from the edge to the cloud. We would directly transfer the data from the edge device to the cloud. That example there shows that we need to support very distributed models where the source and target uh, task are in totally different parts of the world. Um, so that requires a pretty sophisticated communication model, which is Twister.net. We have the streaming and batch modes, of course, and those uh, have to support very different data flow model. In Spark, it's ephemeral, namely you have a fixed amount of data. When that data is finished, the data node responsible for it disappears. For the case of um, streaming, the, the programs run forever, and what happens is the events disappear, because those just have a finite lifetime within the system. We need to do both the coarse grain orchestration model, which is pictured on the next slide, NIFI, um, which is on the next slide. And there's Pegasus, Kepler, or other famous systems that do that, Taverna. And we need to do the high performance streaming, which is sort of what Spark uh, is intends, and which is first done in a sophisticated fashion, or at least not the first, but. The recent sophisticated model is done by a group from Microsoft with NIAD. As well as all of this, we have to invoke at Dataflow nodes, T-sets. They're created at Dataflow nodes, which define the object state at those nodes. And then they persist the data when you do, when you do the transformations. So here we have the picture of NIFI, um, which is a, often these um, coarse grain workflow or orchestration systems have graphical interfaces which allow the user to specify programs and links between programs. Here we have two programs, and we have a link, and another link, another program, and that program links to two other programs. So this is a classic coarse grain data flow graph. Often the linkage between programs goes via disk. Because these are so async, they're totally asynchronous. There's a lot, a lot of reason to be terribly worried about latency in a lot of these uh, orchestrations. And um, remember, we have computations happening on nodes, communication via disk or other fashion, or by reductions or broadcasts. They happen on the links between nodes and um, fine-grained data flow, which is shown here for. Uh, K means you mustn't use disk because it's far too slow. Because you have to have, uh, you just don't have enough computing in a, in a given uh, iteration to be able to afford to write things to disk. And that's why you either implement it directly in memory, we're not even thinking about disk, or you uh, think about this but uh, cache the data so it never actually gets written uh, to, to disk. Or if it does get written, it does in the background so you don't see the cost. Um, and we can do in-place models or in stream in um, streaming. We actually go from tasks different between different task sets for the different data flow nodes. And when you're doing a batch model, you have one node here and another node here. Those nodes can actually run on the same set of tasks. But if you have a streaming and you have a node here and a node here, as the, everything is persistent. Uh, you have to keep those on different task, set, task sets. And that has to be supported by your system. And of course, that's what Twister 2 supports. Here are comments on the sort of overall logistics of it. It's open source, Apache license version 2. Everything is open on GitHub at this address here. There's documentation also on, on GitHub or GitBook. And the developer group uh, mainly comes from Sri Lanka 9 including some undergraduates um, back in Sri Lanka and other graduate students um, in, the, in at Indiana. Uh, we have two from Turkey, and there's me sitting from a different place. 
We were started in the fourth quarter of 2017, and up to then we had the previous strategy, which we mentioned on one of the slides, of modifying the big data software. But we decided that to make real progress, we had to actually rewrite some of it ourselves. We started with some Heron code, but now that code has been bootstrap code is removed. It has 80,000 lines of code. Uh, if we added a harp, that would be another 50,000. And it is primarily Java with some Python. We have more details later on. Here is the uh, team with uh, me as uh, outside us in the, in the uh, just here. Okay, that's the team. Here's Turkey. And um, here's India. The rest are from Sri Lanka. Okay. Hello, we've done these two slides before, actually as part of a general specification of um, uh, distributed uh, programming systems, but we'll do them through, again well, from a Twister 2 point of view. These is our result of our analysis of the components you need for a distributed programming system. We have the broad area, the components. These are the components of a toolkit we're trying to build in Twister 2. Some comments on the implementation and some comments on the functionality here. Um, so here we have the overall architecture. Well, we need to support parallel computing with different modes, which tend to be on the, how the synchronization is done. We need to have the coordination points of the data flow graph. Uh, which is um, going to be uh, arranged uh, state and configuration, checkpointing, uh, launching of new capabilities, branching off at the data flow node. Um, and that's also where all the s s things like RD, the equivalent of RDD, which Twister 2 calls T sets, are invoked at that point. So. Here we have the uh, execution semantics, which is how we map um, the resources to bolts and maps, and we have containers and processes and threads. Uh, this is actually done differently in different systems, and it's not quite clear why people do this. Whether, And we also know, of course, that's true in HPC, our experiences, whether you use threads or processes, it's not so clear which one is the most efficient for a given problem. And they have slightly different programming models. Some way, some you could view processes as easier in some ways and threads in easier another way. But there is no set of clear rules about what to do. We have job submission where we want to use um, Slurm and Yarn and Mesos and Marathon and Aurora. These are all job submission systems uh, with together with, of course, Kubernetes and Mesos. We need to have task migration if necessary. Uh, that's not going to be in the initial version of Twister 2. Elasticity will also not be in the initial version. There we can probably get the capability from OpenWhisk. Uh, streaming will be in the, uh, it's in the current actually released version with a storm, which is the same as Heron API. And we use Kafka or RapidNQ. Task execution, well, we do tasks can run in processing threads or the queues, which are made by Kafka, and then we have scheduling, which is dynamic um, or static, and we have various scheduling algorithms, and we can obviously add more because there are as many scheduling algorithms as there are computer scientists. And we have a task graph similar to, to Spark. Here are the last set of capabilities. We have messaging, which is in the Heron style or storm style, and um, that could be done in different ways, but we're currently using Kafka or equivalent. The data flow communication, which is twister.net, and the release piece of software is a package just to do the data flow communication. And that's much faster than Spark and, and Heron do the same thing. Um, the 
Bulk synchronous processing, we either use MPI or HARP or some mixture thereof. And that's we would call the map collective communication model. We have data access, which is the NOSTIS. Initially is HDFS, and we have to add support for NoSQL and SQL engines. We already have, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, message brokers and spouts built in because we have the Storm API. So this is all under the so called data API. Uh, we have the distributed data set. We spent recently most of our effort has been on that, which is what we call T sets and the Twister to data sets. And it's a distributed, it's executed in a relaxed fashion only when necessary. And um, it's immutable for um, RDDs create new RDDs. And so T sets create new T sets. And so we have to support that creation of new T sets. And we have transformations, remember Spark at 80. We don't have 80, but we have to have some of those Spark operators. Checkpointing is, is not fully implemented yet, but will be in the next release after the March release, March 2019 release. And that's especially for, they're actually already checkpointing differently in uh, Storm and then Spark. And we have to do both of those. And those checkpointing is done at these uh, coordination points, which are the nodes of the data flow graphs. Security is critical. And we don't do much on security. We think we need more research. But I don't think Spark or any of these systems have any special security. They, they inherit existing security, lo secure logins and access and things like that. But they don't have special security built in. So that's the end of this, uh, this uh, slide set. And it's the over initial overview of Twister 2. Thank you.